Welcome back! It looks like we have a new party goer. And it's Steve. The Stevedore looks a little more refined than you'd expect. He's also rather attractive. And the only way to find out whether or not he is a semi happy or happy or fanatically happy part party goer is to talk to him. Please, of course, that's, that's what we want to know, right? Also, I think it's going to depend on uh, how Laura reacts to his presence. Also, Laura is probably not very happy that he seems to be talking to Yvette right now, considering Yvette's reputation so far. So let's see if we can cut in. Are you having a nice evening, Mr. Dorian? Well, it's much, much better with you nearby. Good answer. Well, now that he's here, we can, of course, question him. And we must. Like before, he will give different answers than when we questioned him on the docks, so we'll go through the whole list again. So let's start with Sam Augustini. I'm afraid I don't know the gentleman. I don't get out much. Alright, well, not the most, uh... Not the best start. Dr. Carter. That particular gentleman is a little too full of himself for my liking. I suppose he has reason to be, though, being a famous archaeologist and all. True. Dr. Carrington. I don't know anyone that important, Miss Bow. Oh, wait. I saw him on the docks. He came in on the Andrea Doria. He had the biggest, heaviest trunk I've ever seen. You know, it smelled kind of funny, too. Yeah, that's what he said before, and I still think that is very suspicious, considering that murder we saw in the introduction. Detective O'Reilly. Oh, he's a decent fellow, I think, but sometimes I wonder if he drinks a little. You're not the first person to mention that, so I'm pretty sure you're right. How about Rube? Excuse me, are you having trouble with your throat, Miss Bo? Maybe you should drink a glass of water. <laughs> sure. Well, I do have a water glass. It just doesn't have any water in it. How about Low Fat? I don't think you used his laundry services. I've never met the fellow. I, I do my own laundry, Miss Bo. Indeed? How about John Bo? I've never had the pleasure of meeting your father, Miss Bo. And I bet you wish that someday you can. Ziggy. Oh, that dime store hoodlum used to lurk around the docks all the time. I haven't seen him in a long while. I guess he's been busy with other things. Must have found some other criminal engagement to keep him busy. How about Dr. Miklos? Isn't she a charming lady? A little eccentric, but I think that's colorful, don't you? That's definitely one way to put it. How about Yvette? You better be very careful with your answer here. Um, she's a lovely girl, Miss Bo, but she makes me just a little nervous. Oh, really? You think she's lovely, do you? Uh, well, sure. A man would have to be blind not to see that, right? I think she wears a wig. She looks cheap. Her hair looks real to me. How come she makes you nervous? You're big enough to take care of yourself. Well, she's kind of pushy, if you know what I mean. No, I'm afraid I don't. And I don't think she's your type. Um... Could we talk about something else? I suppose so, since this topic seems to make you nervous. Oh, Steve, wrong answer. He does seem to be a little bit uh, naive, as we'll see later as well. That is not what a girl you're interested in wants to hear when you're talking about another attractive lady. Sometimes it just doesn't pay to be honest, Steve. 
How about Wolf Heimlich? Oh, he's an okay Joe, I guess. He sure takes his job seriously. That he does. Ramses Niger. He's a studious gentleman, isn't he? I wish he'd been there to help me when I was taking trigonometry. <laughs> I guess so. The Countess. You saw her on the docks, I believe. She's some really rich lady. I saw her on the docks one day. She met Mr. Carrington, as a matter of fact. And she was acting very suspicious when we asked her about that, so... Wish we could dig into that a little more, but so far we can't. Himself? Why, that's me, Miss Bo. Steve Dorian. Steve Dorian's student. Remember? Yes, I remember. How about Dr. Smith? Oh, he's that hot-tempered Egyptian fellow who was shouting at Dr. Carter that day on the docks. He seems nice enough now. Maybe Dr. Carter just said something to set him off that day. Oh, I have a feeling I know what it was. Uh, that's all the people, so let's move on to the trip. That's a fine paper, Miss Bo. I try to buy a copy for my mother now and then, when I can. She loves to read the advice columns. That's good to hear. The police station? I really admire the police. They put their lives on the line just to keep us safe. True, I suppose. Lofat's laundry? I do my own laundry. We already knew that. The docks, that's where you work after all. Well, working at the docks is just a temporary thing. I'm going to support my mother and myself as an artist someday, as soon as I graduate with my art degree. Yes, because making a living as an artist is such a guaranteed thing. The museum is as far as we got last time, I think. The Leindecker is one of my favorite places in the whole world. I've never seen so many wonderful things in one place before. Are you talking about the exhibits or Laura and Yvette? He left us last time we asked about the museum, so everything else is new. Do you like living in New York, Mr. Dorian? I suppose so, but I've never lived anywhere else, so I don't have much to judge by. Well, you can still tell us whether or not you like it. I'm not asking you to rate it against other places. I doubt he's the type to go to speakeasies. I know some folks like to, but... I never go to places like that, Miss Bo. That does not surprise me. What do you think of our notebook? You carry a notebook, hmm? I carry a sketchbook sometimes. I used to, anyway. The boys at the dock tease me about it. Of course they do. Why does that not surprise me? How about the magnifying glass? I suppose your magnifier helps you in your investigations, Miss Bo? <laughs> You're the most remarkable woman I've ever met. Wow, he actually got what we needed for. Seems to be the only one here who made that connection. The water glass? Miss Bo, if you're thirsty, I'll go get you something to drink. You don't have to carry that glass around. You're a sweetheart, but that is not why we're carrying the glass. Has 1926 been a good year for you, Mr. Dorian? Yes, Miss Bo, it has. I'm enjoying my sophomore year of college very much. You're attending college? What's your major? Art. I hope to be a famous painter someday. That's wonderful, Mr. Dorian. Oh, it's no big deal. Well, better than working on the docks, I guess. Especially from what everybody has been t telling us about them. What are your thoughts on the burglary? What do you make of the theft of the dagger, Mr. Dorian? I think it's awful, Miss Bo. Just awful. Who do you suppose could have done it? 
I have no idea who could have perpetrated such a terrible thing. I just hope they get what's coming to them, that's all. So do I, Mr. Dorian. Indeed. Even more so, I hope that we can unveil who the burglar was, because it would be very good for our career, I'm sure. Do you know much about Egyptology, Mr. Dorian? I'm afraid I don't. I wanted to take a class in it this semester, but I couldn't quite manage it. That is too bad. Well, that's all we can talk to Steve about. We can, however, overhear this conversation between him and Yvette, which I'm sure will be very interesting. You are interested in the great art, no? Then you should come with me this evening. I'll give you the personal tour of the old master's gallery. Well, uh, I... I guarantee that you will not be wasting your time. You will enjoy it very much. Well, I... You are studying the art at the university, no? Well, yes, but... Then it is settled. I will give you the private tour in a little while, no? But I... There is no need to thank me yet. I will be enjoying it as much as you will. Uh... Okay. Well, at least he doesn't uh, seem to like her very much. And like you said, she seems kind of pushy. Which doesn't seem uh, to be something he enjoys. But he'd much rather have Laura show him around. But Laura has other things to do. And thankfully, those other things do not include talking to more people right now. Because we are actually done, finally, with talking to people and eavesdropping. Which means we can finally go look around a little bit in the museum. Everybody's also conveniently gone now. Let's check out this gift shop that we saw earlier. Wonder if it's even open for the fundraiser. Be nice to get a memento. Not that we have any money, but still, we can look what we might buy later when we do. It does appear to be open. So that's good. Let's see what they have. What a beautiful Art Deco rug. You almost hate to walk on it. I just want to get a description of the room. Why are you walking over there? It's a painting of the pharaoh Uba Spamaton hunting geese in the springtime with his hounds and his son, Nyet. Um... Yes, that's what I clicked on here. It's a... Weird. When you click in the... Outside any specific object that seems to think you're clicking on that painting. Also, I don't think that's a thing. It's a painting. All right, whatever. Let's look at things on the shelves. It's a replica of the famous bust of Nefertiti. You've always wondered if the paint wore off or if the queen really had white eyes. The former, I would expect. These appear to be copies of ancient Egyptian artifacts. They seem to be nicely crafted. That's good. These appear... These appear... Anything else that besides the bust of Nefertiti that gives a specific response? I guess that does. It's the museum's bargain version of the bust of Nefertiti. It doesn't look that bad except for the huge nose. I guess back then they didn't sell keychains and mugs and refrigerator magnets and all the other crap that you can get in gift shops nowadays. These vessels appear to be replicas of 7th century Welsh condiment pots made for export to Ireland. Okay. These... These ve These are replicas of early 12th century Celtic insect trapping pottery. Insect trapping pottery? Is that a thing? These vessels... These vessels... These... 
I guess that's all on the shelves. Let's look at the other painting. What a beautiful painting of the Mask of Tutankhamun. You wish you had the money to buy it. You can just take it, don't right? Don't touch it. You don't know where it's been. I guess not. There's a register? It's the cash register. Well, that would solve our cash problem. Laura, you'd never steal. Okay. Laura, you'd never steal. I guess not. There was silence supreme. Not a shriek, not a scream. Scarcely even a howl or groan. As the man they called Ho told his story of woe in an antediluvian tone. Lewis Carroll. Alright, no response if you try to talk to stuff. <laughs> Just making sure. They appear to be broken parts of some kind. Probably authentic artifacts. Or maybe someone just dropped them. I doubt they'd be keeping authentic artifacts in the gift shop. That looks like a Peruvian footed vessel. It has a picture of a bat painted on the inside of the bowl. Okay. If you say so. This is the counter where the counter counts the money. Aha! Uh -huh. What do we have on this side? Some more vases and stuff? This is a replica of the pottery made by the Wheeze Neck Indians of southern Ontario. All their pottery was purple because they believed that moose are terrified by purple things. They used to set the purple pots all around their campsites to ward off potential attacks by angry moose. It didn't work. Okay. This case holds beautiful museum replicas. This case... This case holds... It looks like... Something familiar is it here. It looks just like the Dagger of Amon-Ra. Isn't it beautiful? Indeed. It looks like there's a bunch of dagger replicas being sold here. They are unfortunately behind glass, so we can't get you any can't of them. can't touch the daggers on display in the locked case. Which is annoying. We can, however, get a closer look with the uh, magnifying glass. It is a very pretty dagger. I'm sure the original was even more impressive. The dagger shows Pittsburgh's high degree of craftsmanship. And indeed it says made in Pittsburgh on the it. The dagger sh It looks just like the dagger of Amon-Ra. Isn't it beautiful? Yep, indeed it is. Look at the, the different daggers, but they all look the, the same. The dagger shows Pittsburgh. Wait a second. You don't suppose that... Nah, it couldn't be. Let's check each dagger. Upon close Wait a second. This one doesn't say made in Pittsburgh. The dagger shows a high degree of craftsmanship. Aha, but not Pittsburgh's high degree of craftsmanship. Indeed, we have actually found the original dagger. Well, that was easy. Just have to tell people about it, I guess. Too bad we can't take it out of the case. It is kind of interesting that the dagger ended up here. That does, again, suggest that this was an inside job. Somebody with access to the museum took the dagger from its display and hid it in the gift shop. That seems risky. What if, what if it was sold to somebody? That would be uh, very unfortunate. Presumably, they want to move it elsewhere later, once all the heat has died down. Fräulein, this gift shop is closed. You should not be here. Oh, I'm sorry. The door was unlocked. Unlocked? 
My assistant will be disciplined harshly for this mistake. Please rejoin the party now, or I will be forced to injure you. Okay. Wait, assistant? Does he even have an assistant? Unless he's talking about Ernie, who we haven't seen yet. Otherwise, he's just trying to deflect blame, I guess. But the real dagger's in there. Can we tell him? The gift shop is closed! You must leave at once! I wonder if whoever put the uh, dagger in there actually opened the gift shop. Rather than somebody just forgetting to lock it. That would support the theory of this being the work of a museum employee again. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we can actually tell anybody. Nor can we get the dagger, nor can we get back into the gift shop, so... That sucks. Anyway... Let's see what else we can do here. Oh, Steve again. And it's cutscene time. Miss Bo? Oh! Mr. Dorian? That's right, we met at the docks. Oh dear, your shoes. They aren't exactly... formal. Oh, well, I can explain that, but not right now. I see. Well, mm, what brings you here? You. Oh, me? You told me you'd be here tonight and, well, I thought we should talk. Oh, about what? Um, could we step outside for a minute? The moonlight is very nice tonight. Well, all right. I think I'd enjoy that. I just wanted to explain to you who I really am. You're not Steve Dorian? Uh, well, yes, I am Steve Dorian, but I felt like I didn't give you the most accurate impression of myself when I met you earlier today. But, gee willikers, I'm just not used to meeting attractive young ladies on the docks. I wasn't down there looking for a man. I'm a professional journalist working on a story. Oh, well, yes, of course you are. I didn't mean to imply anything. In fact, I was very impressed with your professionalism and with your smile. I just didn't want you to think I'm a common stevedore. Well, I'll admit I was wondering what a stevedore was doing at this ritzy museum fundraiser. My stevedore job pays the bills. But I'm aiming for a career as an artist. However, I'm really here because... I'd hate myself for the rest of my life if I didn't try to see you again. Maybe I'm a fool, maybe you think we're too different. But I had to try. Well, I'm very flattered. Are you always this nervous? I'm not very good with women. I, I spent all my time working ever since I was ten years old, when my father died. I've never had a chance to date very much. Lately, I've spent my free time going to school. I'm starting to think we're more alike than I first thought. My mother died when I was very young, so I was raised by my father. What kind of an artist are you? I'm a painter, and I do a little sculpting. How interesting! But I think that an artist would know enough not to wear work boots with his tuxedo at a formal party. Oh, I said I'd explain that, didn't I? I was hoping nobody would notice. I had to blow two weeks' pay to rent this tux. 
but I didn't have enough left over to rent the fancy shoes. It's just that I had to see you again. You spent all your money just to see me? My goodness, I don't know what to say. Say you'll have dinner with me some evening. I, I may seem a little odd, but I promise that I'm harmless. I'd be honored to spend an evening with you and show you the sights around town. Well, I don't usually, but you've gone to a lot of trouble to find me. I think I can trust you. Really? You'll do it? Oh, thank you. You won't regret it. I'll make it a, a memorable evening. I'll paint for you. I'll dance for you. I'll, I'll sing for you. Anything you want. Well, there's no need to get carried away. Let's see how dinner goes first. Of course. You're absolutely right. I, I don't seem too anxious, do I? Maybe just a bit, but that's okay. Okay. I'll take a deep breath and calm down. I'll be fine. I'll do whatever you want. I think this is the beginning of something important, Steve. I like you already. Let's go back to the party, Steve. I've got work to do. All right. It seems that even Laura Bow is not immune from Sierra character's tendency to fall in love in about two minutes after meeting somebody. I like the logic there of, well, I don't usually, but you took the trouble to stalk me, so I guess I can trust you. <laughs> anyway. Wonder where this will go and how it will play in with the rest of the story, because we still have a burglary to solve. And I guess since it looks like nobody else is here right now, and the... And we can't tell anybody about the dagger in the gift shop, might as well go and explore the museum a little bit. Yes, we can finally get out of this room after what, like... Three hours? Let's see what else we can find in the museum. Dinosaur bones, it seems. The cold marble floor peers back at you, almost mockingly, giving up none of the secret machinations it has seen in the past few hours. Oh, if only floors could speak. This game has so many descriptions of things that it's almost impossible to just get a description of the room. Because everything you click on will have a, com a custom description. There's nothing particularly exciting about this stretch of blank wall. There's nothing... See what I mean? There's nothing... There's nothing... There's nothing... I guess this room doesn't have a... Generic description? Let's look at the exhibits anyway. This is a mastodon, one of the early mammals. Technically, the Mastodon is not a dinosaur at all, but since they date back to prehistory, they're included in the exhibit. This particular example of the order Proboscidea is the Mammoth Americanus, or North American Mastodon. The chief feature which distinguishes this shaggy beast from the elephant and the woolly mammoth are its molar teeth. Yes, prepare to be inundated with a lot of information in this part of the game. How about this little guy? Well, Lil, he's still kind of big, but littler, littler than this guy. The museum staff have labeled this a Struthiomimus, literally, ostrich mimic. Is that what he does? Mimic ostriches? I don't know. Ah, a very nice specimen of Eohippus, somewhat flatter than it appeared in real life. Yes, probably. This is an Archaeopteryx. Correction, this used to be an Archaeopteryx. True, I guess. 
Hasn't been an Archaeopteryx in a long time. This is an Aereops skull. Such a large capacity mandible and teensy capacity cranium. That was pretty common for animals back then, I think. Can we inspect them closer, I wonder? Under close inspection, you can see that this pile of bones could indeed be assembled to resemble the skeleton of a mastodon. Determining whether or not the reproduction is at all accurate is beyond your expertise. Yep, I guess uh, Laura does not know much about that stuff. In every respect, it appears to be untampered with and normal. G good to know. As you carefully examine the fossilized remains of the Eohippus, you cannot help but reflect on how brief our lifespans are in relation to the age of the Earth. You sigh heavily at the existentialism of it all. Then you return to your investigation. Okay, a brief moment of introspection there for Laura. Even in close-up, this is nothing more than a fossilized Archaeopteryx. In every apparent respect, this is a perfectly normal million-year-old chunk of a prehistoric creature's endoskeleton. Yep. Just like you'd find everywhere. On every street corner, right? Where does this door There's go? There's nothing particularly exciting about this stretch of blank wall. The narrator doesn't even want to comment on the fact that there's a door there. Well, I guess we can only find out by trying it then. Achtung! Terrests are not allowed in this room at this time. You are disturbing the paintings. Raus! You leave now! Mark schnell! Um, okay. I'm disturbing the paintings? Sure. Wait, does that mean the gift shop is now unoccupied again? Maybe we can get the, the dagger out. I wish Laura wouldn't walk so slowly. Even if you turn up the speed, it like speeds up the animation, but not really makes her walk that much faster. The gift shop is closed! You must leave at once! Well, I don't know about anything else, but I think we've established that Wolf has an identical twin. Or is in fact a wizard and can teleport. Important thing to notice. Or has some sneaky way of getting from the old master's gallery to the gift shop without us noticing. It would also be very prescient of him though to know that we were gonna go back there. Anyway, I guess that doesn't work. We can't go left here, but we can go right. Game is very finicky about where you click to go right here. And we have more dinosaurs on display. You're in the pterodactyl portion of the dinosaur exhibit. And there's the pterodactyl. Suspended overhead by thin wires, the pterodactyl frozen in mid-swoop presents a most horrific tableau. Indeed. The ceiling is very high in this room. Beyond the hanging pterodactyl is a metal catwalk. Oh, I guess we can't see that. Suppose that's done to perform maintenance or something? I don't know. The ceiling is. Can't really look at the wire specifically. Oh well. It's a painting of a spinosaur. The painting is accurate and workmanly with little regard for nuance or emotion. Well, this is a dinosaur exhibit, not a paint ex painting exhibit, so I guess that makes sense. The male and female Triceratops look every inch the proud parents. Oh yeah, they have an egg here that seemingly just hatched. In this diorama, two baby Triceratops are emerging from their eggs. Viewing this quaint domestic scene causes a slight twinge right in your maternal instincts. 
<laughs> oh, I'm sure. Suspended overhead by thin. Oh, that's the part of the pterodactyl, I guess. The male and female. How about this guy? A fairly accurate model of Struthiomimus, or ostrich mimic. Oh, that was the skeleton in the other room. Can we investigate these things more closely? Looking at the pterodactyl from here through the magnifying glass is pointless. True. It's a very big painting of a Spinosaur. Under your closest scrutiny, there's still nothing more than models of baby Triceratops. Looking carefully, you determine that the models in the diorama are very well made. Important observation. Up close, this is an impressively realistic model. The animal's hide appears to be either very real or a spectacular fake, and the stitch marks are beautifully hidden. You find nothing that arouses your suspicions. I wasn't really expecting it to, either. Well, I guess we'll continue exploring the museum in the next video.